so uh, the second law is useful to overcome the uh, uh, drawback of first law of thermodynamics so second law will provide means for uh, predicting the direction of process so the limitation of first law of thermodynamics is uh, that that, uh, that doesn't tell the uh, direction of process so this second law will uh, predict the direction of a process then establishing conditions for equilibrium can be studied by the second law of thermodynamics so the condition of the equilibrium can be studied with the help of second law of thermodynamics then determining the best theoretical performance of cycles and engines and other other devices can be studied uh, by the use of uh, second law of thermodynamics so the main drawback of first law of thermodynamics is uh, the direction then the condition of equilibrium then the determining uh, performance of the system so these all three will be carried out by the second law of thermodynamics right so 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 uh, uh, consider these three uh, systems so you have a system having a hot, hot coffee so your cup of hot coffee does not get hotter in a cooler room so there will be a heat flow out of the system right so but in a cooler room we can't add heat to the coffee so it is impossible also in the second system a uh, transferring heat uh, to a wire will not generate electricity so it is impossible to generate electricity if you pass a heat to the system but the actual system is if the electricity is passed through a wire we can generate a heat so this is actual system but uh, the reverse is impossible here also the transferring heat to a paddle wheel will not cause it, it to rotate so in actual system if you rotate this uh, uh, paddle wheel we can uh, if you rotate this uh, system we can get a heat in the paddle wheel but reverse is not occurred so these limitations the directions of the uh, process is not de de determined in the first law of thermodynamics so to overcome that uh, the second law of thermodynamics came so these processes cannot occur even though they are not in violations of the first law of thermodynamics so this is not violating the first law of thermodynamics but anyway there is no uh, cannot occur right this process cannot occur so for that we have to look at the second law of thermodynamics then we can move to so second law of thermodynamics is uh, stated here so according to kelvin planck's statement so no heat the first statement is no heat engine can have a thermal efficiency 100 percentage so first we have to know what is a heat engine so to understand that heat engine so just you can uh, you can refer this Wait a minute. Uh, I will open and full screen mode. Yes. So, according to Kelvin Planck's statement, uh, we have uh, two statements. That is, one, one is that no heat engine can have a thermal efficiency 100 percentage. Then, as for a power plant to operate, the working fluid must exchange heat with the environment as well as the furnace. Yes, you know, uh, a power plant must. Uh, uh, exchange heat energy with the surroundings or, uh, or with the uh, furnace. So that heat loss is accounted to have the efficiency of the system. So according to Kelvin Planck's statement in second law of thermodynamics, there is no 100% thermal efficiency possible. So this is a Kelvin Planck statement. So, if you look at the heat engine, so this is the heat engine provided there. So, uh, there will be a heat source that is QH, there will be a, uh, a sink that will be uh, QL. So, heat source will be having more heat, 
more temperature then its sink will be having less temperature so if uh, there is also a, a pump provided in the system then also there is a turbine provided in the system in the heat engine so this is the principle of heat engine so we will look at that what is heat engine in the next slide so in the heat engine must have a heat source and a heat sink and a pump and a turbine so if you provide the heat transfer from the heat uh, source to heat sinks we can transfer heat by uh, by the heat source and the heat sink then we can uh, uh, we can able to get the work done by the turbine so this is possible if you if there is a heat transfer we can get the work done so that is the principle of heat engine so we can we can clear we can have a clear idea about heat engine in the next slides that is work can easily be converted to other forms of energy so if work is possible we can convert that work as an energy heat engine differ considerably from one another but all can be characterized in the following manner so the heat engines receives heat from higher temperature source uh, that heat engine convert part of this heat to work so uh please understand uh, I, uh, part of this work so whole work can be converted to uh, whole heat transfer can't be converted to work but part of this heat transfer is converted into work they reject the remaining waste heat to, to a low temperature sink atmosphere so remaining uh, heat will be sent to sink they operate on a cycle so again there will be a repetition so again there will be a cyclic process so high temperature then there will be a work generator then there will be the, the remaining heat will go to the sink then if again the uh, if you pump we can get to a high temperature so the heat engine uh, diagram can be uh, seen here we can uh, much more you can have much more clarity about the heat engine by viewing this uh, schematic representation so uh, so if heat engine will have a boiler so it was i heat and so the heat engine have condenser it will have a uh, uh, low heat that is energy sink then your boiler will be an energy source then if you pass this uh, uh, steam produced by the boiler to the uh, turbine we can get a work person uh mechanical and mechanical output or else some electrical output so if you uh, there will be rotation right so turbine will rotate the shaft and if you connect that shaft with the uh, any generator we can get the electrical power electrical work output so the work output is possible by the use of the heat engine so there will be a boiler that is heat source there will be a condenser this heat sink there will be a turbine to produce the work then there will be a pump we have to here so in turbine we can get work out but in pump we have to work we have to give work work on the system so here in turbine we can get work done by the system so here q uh, into the system in condenser q out of the system so all these processes you know very well so just the combination of these four processes will be a working principle of a heat engine the work producing device so we can have the uh, definition of a um, heat engine so this is a work producing device that best fit into the definitions of a heat engine is the steam power plant so we can get a, a heat engine as steam power plant which is an external combustion engine so assume this a steam power plant this is a steam power plant so this will be a example for heat engine so there will be a boiler there will be a turbine there will be a condenser and there will be a pump so in pump we have to give work in turbine we can get work in energy source we can transfer uh, heat energy into the system in condenser we can transfer the heat energy out of the system right so these four processes can be present in the uh, steam power plant so the working medium of this uh, uh, engine is steam 
right so then uh, if heat engine is there we have to look at the thermal efficiency so this thermal efficiency represent the magnitude of the energy wasted in order to complete the cycle so thermal efficiency efficiency in the sense the output by input so thermal efficiency can be calculated so this this represents the uh, magnitude of energy wasted in the process right a yeah, measure of the performance that is called the thermal efficiency so performance also be ide identified by the thermal efficiency right so thermal efficiency will give you the energy wasted magnitude of energy wasted in the uh, process and also we can measure the uh, performance of the system by with the use of thermal efficiency so this thermal efficiency can be expressed in terms of the desired output and the required input so you know what is uh, efficiency the efficiency will be output by inputs so so here thermal efficiency can be desired results so what kind of uh, work done we can obtain from the uh, system and the input required input that is our uh, heat transfer right for a heat engine the desired result is the net work done you know so we can get the net to work done as an output and the heat and the input is the heat supply to make a cycle operator so if you look at this previous uh, uh, schematic representation just the input will be uh, heat transfer then if your output will be your work net work out the output so here there is work in there is then work out so we have to calculate the net work output then also there is a q in there is q out so we have to calculate the uh, net heat transfer so so we can calculate the thermal efficiency by output by input so here we have a desired result by required input so desired result will be a net work done and the desired uh, required input will be your uh, heat supply to make a cycle operate so this is the uh, formula for thermal efficiency of a uh, heat engine so thermal efficiency is always less than 1 or less than 100% so we can have the thermal efficiency with less than 1 or in percent if, if it is in percentage that will be less than 100% because uh, there is no um, systems available to produce 100% of efficiency according to second law of thermodynamics so this is a formula so thermal efficiency can be calculated by w net output by q in so w net output divided by q in where we know w net output can be calculated by w out minus w in so w out will be from uh, turbine and w in will be from pump so we we did some uh, work on the system and we expect some work out of the system so we have to calculate the net work done then uh, if you consider the uh, uh, input we we will give the q in that is we will provide the heat source to the coil boiler so there will be q in but definitely q in will not be q net will not be equal to q net you know so there will be some loss there will be some q out but we have to take the q in alone so this is the uh, thermal efficiency calculation so this is important for all the uh, uh, thermodynamic processes according to second law of thermodynamics then applying the first law of thermodynamics uh, to a heat engine we can obtain this relation you know first law of thermodynamics will state change in total energy is equal to q minus w so here q net in minus w net out can be calculated by delta u and you know uh, there is no internal change in energy here so we can we can get the uh, equation as w net out is equal to q net in so we can uh, we can have the equation as uh, w output is equal to q input that can be written as w net output is equal to this q net in can be calculated by q in 
minus Q out. So Q net, heat transfer net can be calculated by heat supply minus heat rejected. So this can be substituted in the uh, thermal efficiency that is uh, uh, eta thermal is equal to w, w net out by Q in. So instead of W net out, we can substitute Q in by Q out. Then we can have uh, Q in by Q out by Q in. Then Q in can be cancelled and we can have the uh, final expression of a thermal efficiency as 1 minus Q out by Q in. That is, so we can calculate the thermal efficiency of a system with the use of uh, heat detector and the heat supply. Hello. Yes, a thermodynamic temperature scales related to the heat transfer between the reversible device and uh, the and the high and low temperature uh, reservoirs by so if the thermodynamic system is in temperature scale we can have QL by QH we can have a Q low uh, heat transfer as the TL and high heat transfer as TH so in the form of temperatures right Q transfer also can be in the form of temperatures so we can take QL as a TL and we can take QH as a TH so this formula is an important formula, just uh, make a note of it, just QL by QH is equal to TL by TH. So L stands low, H stands high. Then you know Q stand the uh, heat transfer, then L uh, T stands uh, temperature. Then the heat engine that operates on the reversible Carnot cycle is called the Carnot heat engine in which the efficiency is uh, uh, eta thermal uh, reversible is a reversible Carnot cycle efficiency is 1 minus TL by TH. So, we will look at what is Carnot uh, heat engine. So, what is we will look at what is Carnot cycle. So, this Carnot cycle is purely dependent on the temperature scale, thermodynamic temperature scale. So, we can rewrite the equation as uh, uh, thermal efficiency of reversible in the form of 1 minus TL by TH. So here we replaced QL to that is a Q uh, out as a TL that is the temperature loss, the temp low temperature then uh, in as temperature high, high temperature. So we will provide heat energy as an input and we can obtain the work as an output. So for an Carnot cycle, the Carnot heat engine, we can have the thermal efficiency equation as 1 minus TL by TH, just remember this uh, formulas, so these three formulas. So efficiency is equal to thermal efficiency is equal to 1 minus Q out by Q in. And the second one is QL by QH is equal to TL by TH that you can easily understand. Then uh, for a Carnot cycle, we can have the uh, thermal efficiency as 1 minus TL by TH. So for a Carnot cycle, there will be a temperature scale alone. So we can have the equation as 1 minus TL by TH. Then uh, the inverse of heat engine is heat pump. So you know what is heat engine and you know what is heat pump. So engine will produce a work. But heat pump, so we have to give a work on the system. So heat pump is opposite to the heat engine. But these heat pumps and refrigerators are same, uh, look like same. So we can have what is heat pump, a device that transfer heat from low temperature medium to a high temperature is on heat pump. So this is opposite to the heat engine. There, there is a heat transfer from a high temperature to a low temperature heat sink. But here, if heat pump, there will be a heat flow, heat transfer from low temperature medium to a high temperature that is called a heat pump. This refrigerator, refrigerator operates exactly like a heat pump except that the desired output is amount of uh, heat removed out of the system. So heat pump, we can expect some amount of work, but in refrigerator, the heat transfer, the amount of heat transfer alone can be calculated as an uh, work. 
so you know uh, what is the uh, principle of uh, refrigerator and uh, why we are using the refrigerator so we will look at one by one later so the thing is heat pump uh, is a device that transfer heat from low temperature that is heat sink to a high temperature heat source but in refrigerator uh, it is likely same but uh, heat pump except that the desired output is the amount of heat removed out of the system so how much amount of heat removed out of the system can be considered uh, in the refrigerator right so here so the efficiency here yeah, the heat pump and the refrigerator performance can be identified by the index of performance iop of the heat pump or refrigerator are expressed in terms of the coefficient of performance so the performance of these two um, systems heat pump and refrigerator can be calculated by cop coefficient of performance that can be discussed as in the uh, as figure and as also in the uh, formula so the first figure we show you will give you the uh, heat pump schematic representation and the second figure will give you the uh, schematic representation of uh, refrigerator then we can uh, get the uh, coefficient of performance of the carnot refrigerator as 1 by th minus tl minus 1 that is tl by th minus tl also the coefficient of performance for uh, heat pump for carnot cycle can be calculated by th divided by th minus tl that is heat output so here output by input again okay, so can be calculated so heat pump so from heat cold to we can we can transfer heat transfer from cold reservoir to yeah uh, hot sink that is warm environment uh, we will uh, we will we want to give the uh, work input to get the uh, process possible in a heat pump then in the refrigerator also same like uh, heat pump but uh, from a cold environment also we need to if you apply the work on the system so this is heat pump okay. heat pump so this will give you a warm house so we can uh, we can get the heat into the system and we can get the uh, reduced it Yes, we can we can get the reduced temperature in the refrigerator. So R stands refrigerator and the HP stands heat pump. Right. Yes. So the coefficient of performance of a refrigerator can be calculated with the use of a TL by TH minus that is change in temperature. Then the coefficient of a performance of a heat pump can be calculated by TH that is heat source. And height, high heat by change in heat. Just, uh, just, uh, just remember this uh, formula alone. That is enough. So, if there is a heat engine, we have to look at the uh, efficiency. Then, if there is heat pump, we have to look at the coefficient of performance. So, moreover, the formulas will be same for the both. Right. So this is the uh, heat pump so if, uh, if this is a compressor then this is an evaporator then this is an expansion valve so we know what is all this is a condenser so you know each and uh, every uh, device performances why we are using the these devices in the system you know so you know what is a what is the process in compressor you know what is the process in evaporator then what is the process in expansion valve then what is the process in condenser valve that we already discussed earlier then in compressor just we can uh, from this uh, i heat to by doing expansion valve we can get uh, uh, low pressure and uh, low temperature so from high temperature high, pre high pressure high temperature to low pressure and low temperature then if you subject that uh, steam to a that is uh, gas to the uh, evaporation process just we can get uh, that is same right we can get reduced temperature then 
if you if that medium is subjected to compression process compression allowed to to some compression we can get the increased pressure and we can get the increased temperature so this is a cyclic process right then this is the formula for uh, coefficient of performance of heat pump so this is an example for heat pump then this heat pump coefficient of performance can be calculated by qh that is output so here we we can expect the high heat transfer divided by w in so we provided some input here so if you if you, if you activate this compressor we can get the uh, uh, qh as an output that is a heat transfer we we can have more heat transfer out of the system so that can be calculated as qh by qh minus ql that is uh, input Right, w, w net input can be written as QH minus QL. Then this is Q as an output. So we can we can get QH as an output. So we can have a QH minus QL as an input that is W net in. Also, the uh, coefficient of performance of refrigerator can be calculated by. So here we need a low heat. So in, in the sense of a, a heat pump, we need a high heat. So heat pump. Uh, uh, will be used in uh, uh, high hills areas, uh, low temperature areas can be uh, can be used this uh, heat pumps. In our uh, uh, like Chennai cities, uh, we will use the refrigerators to get a cooled uh, condition. So this is the coefficient of performance of refrigerator. So we the output will be heat transfer, low heat transfer. Then we can have the work in also. So work, work net in can be calculated by QH minus QL. Then according to corner cycle, so corner cycle. So these four processes, these four paths can be followed to get a corner cycle. That one is isothermal heat addition. Then second one is adiabatic expansion. Then third one is isothermal heat rejection and fourth one is adiabatic compression right you know what is compression you know what is expansion you know what is heat addition you know what is heat rejection also you know what is a reversible process so if the process can be reversed that can be called as a reversible process so just as just consider the reversible isothermal heat addition at the high temperature in the first one to uh, process one to two and there will be a reversible adiabatic expansion there will be expansion adiabatic you know what is adiabatic that is sudden from high temperature to a low temperature and you know what is reversible isothermal heat rejection at low temperature and you know what is reversible adiabatic compression from low temperature to high temperatures so this process is called as an these four processes can be uh, combined together will give you a or not cycle so that can be uh, 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 that can uh, that can be understood by the use of a piston cylinder device so in the process one to two there will be uh, isothermal you know isothermal here uh, but high temperature so th high temperature will be constant isothermal process then if you supply heat addition adiabatic isothermal heat addition right then for, from process two to three there will be a uh, isentropic right the second process is adiabatic expansion so reversible adiabatic expansion from high temperature to low temperature so how can we expand so the air inside the medium inside will expand from high temperature to low temperature so heat addition then expansion adiabatic expansion then process three to four will give you uh, again uh, uh, this rejection, heat rejection. So low temperature, isothermal, low temperature constant, but we can we can get the uh, uh, heat transfer out of the system, heat rejection. Then the process four to one uh, can be again that is a low temperature to a high temperature. Right, so compression. 
right, expansion, this is compression. So in compression, if you compress, you can get a uh, low temperature, low temperature to a high temperature. So these four processes combined together will give you the Carnot cycle. So this is the execution of Carnot cycle with the use of a piston cylinder device. So we can easily understand. So in the first process, there will be an isothermal heat addition at high temperature. And in the second process, we can have a reversible expansion, adiabatic expansion. And in the process three to four, we can have a, a reversible a isothermal heat rejection with low temperature and in the process of 4 to 1 we can have the uh, compression and a reversible adiabatic compression from low temperature to high temperature again this will again this will go this here so there was high temperature and constant temperature so we can have we can add a heat energy uh, into the system again there will be a cyclic process so this process can be called as an Carnot cycle. So the name came because of a scientist named Carnot found this cycle. So this system, this cycle is possible to get a desired uh, work and have a maximum output that can be represented in the form of uh, our PV diagram as well as our PS diagram. So you know if the plot is uh, plotted from for a pressure and uh, here specific velocity, the specific volume that can be called as a TV diagram. The volume here can be taken as V capital V, that is volume. And then we can have a TS diagrams also. So T in the sense temperature, so S in the sense entropy. Right. So we can have both the diagrams together. So if you want to denote the corner cycle in PV diagram. So first process. So process one to two is an isen, sorry, isothermal process, right? So isothermal curve will be look like this. Then isothermal the volume will gets what will happen? So isothermal heat addition, right? So this is isothermal process. Then there will be a heat addition. Then from process two to three, we can have a, a reversible adiabatic process that can be called as an isentropic process. So you know the curve of isentropic process for PV diagram. So this will be a steeper curve uh, with, with a compared to isothermal curve, isothermal. Then process two to three, there will be a um, the expansion, right? So there will be an expansion that pressure can be increased. Then mm, process three to four can be isothermal again, isothermal heat rejection here. So here heat addition, the ROH will be in this direction, here heat rejection. So the ROH will be in this direction. So you know, this isotherms, there is two isotherms, that is only is a TH is equal to constant. The second isotherm is TL is equal to constant. Then from process four to one, we can have again isentropic, that is reversible adiabatic uh, uh, compression. Right. If you compress, you can get reduced pressure. So pressure get reduced from, so if you compare this pressure at four, and if you, if you compare the pressure at 0.1, you can get a reduced pressure. So if, you if, if the medium is gets uh, subjected to compression, you can get reduced pressure, right? Just yes, you can, uh, uh, we can, you can compare all these states properties. Here we can have P1, V1, and T1. Here we can have P2, V2, and T2. Here we can have P2, sorry, P3, V3, and T3. Here we can have uh, T4, V4, T4. Also, we can have H, that is uh, enthalpy. Also, we can have V, that is specific volume. Also, we can have S, that is entropy. So you know, so if the medium may be water or or maybe steam or maybe uh, any refrigerants, right? So 
if a steam or water is used as a medium we have to use the uh, table uh, property tables uh, in the form of steams so there is steam tables available then if air is used uh, as a medium this uh, uh, that uh, ideal gas equation is enough to found the uh, uh, calculations if there is a refrigerant used we have to look at the refrigerant table so uh, this is the pv diagram of an uh, carnot cycle so in the form of ts diagram so t is temperature and s is ice entropy right so in the form of ts diagram the first process in carnot cycle is ice and sorry isothermal process so here isothermal is temperature constant so from 1 to 2 there is a constant temperature this is a temperature line so we can have constant temperature then second process is isentropic process so we can have a process three, 2 to 3 as entropy constant s is constant then process 3 to 4 as an again isothermal process but here there is a heat rejection so we can have a, a straight line horizontal line with respect to temperature t then again from process 4 to 1 we can have a isothermal sorry isentropic process entropy is uh, constant so s is constant so we can have a vertical line so again this curve this black line will give you the, the entropy sorry saturation line saturation line right so the point the peak of the curve will give you the critical temperature then this line before the critical temperature we can have that line as an um, saturation liquid line then after the critical point we can have the line as an uh, saturation saturated vapor line right so this we discussed in the early classes just we can have the uh, ts diagram for the corner cycle alone so if there is a rectangle like shape we can identify that process is in at corner cycle right so in corner cycle there is a uh, uh, so first step is isothermal heat addition at high temperature. The second step is isentropic, that is a reversible adiabatic uh, expansion process. Then uh, third step is, is isothermal heat rejection. Right. So then the fourth step is again isentropic, that is reversible adiabatic. Uh, compression right so just remember the process in Carnot cycles so in the next unit we will look at the air standard cycles uh, different air standard cycles so to understand that you have to uh, clearly understand this Carnot cycle first then we can have the thermal efficiency of actual and reversible heat engines operating between the same temperature limits compared as follows so you know what is uh, irreversible heat engine you know what is reversible heat engine right so the thermal efficiency can be compared the thermal efficiency can be compared with the uh, heat engines then we can get the assumptions so if the thermal efficiency is less than the thermal efficiency of a reversible that is a reversible corner cycle that can be uh, stated as irreversible heat engine then if the thermal efficiency is equal to the uh, thermal efficiency of reversible process then we can uh, have the reversible heat engine but uh, if the thermal efficiency is greater than the thermal efficiency of a reversible uh, process that is impossible so we can have impossible heat engine so we can compare so the the, th the, the thing is the thermal efficiency will be less than or equal to the thermal efficiency of reversible reversible process right so just just make a note of it the thermal efficiency will be less than or equal yes you know the kelvin planckett statement of second law of thermodynamics state the, there is no 100 percentage of efficiency so we can have the comparison then in the form of cop that is coefficient of performance of actual and reversible refrigerant operating between the same temperature 
limits compared as follows that is uh, there is cop of refrigerant is again less than or equal to cop of refrigerant of reversible right so if less than uh, we can we can have irreversible refrigerator if that is equal to uh, then we can have a reversible refrigerator yes the same comparison but in the form of uh, efficiency and in the form of uh, cop is stated here so we can have the reversible heat engine also irreversible heat engine also we can have reversible refrigerator also we can have irreversible refrigerator right so if if there is heat engine we have to calculate the efficiency then if there is refrigerator we have to calculate the coefficient of performance the thing is same we want to calculate output by input right just we can move to the uh, problems this is this is a simple problem this we can we can easily solve we know the formulas of the thermal efficiency and the output was give output were given and input also were given in the problem just have a look of the problem a steam power plant produces 50 megawatt of a net work while burning fuel to produce 50 150 megawatt of heat energy at a high temperature right so to produce this is 50 megawatt is an output work output then uh, 150 megawatt of heat energy is given so that is uh, q q h is equal to 150 megawatt then the question is determine the cycle thermal efficiency and the uh, heat rejected by the cycle to the surrounding so we have to calculate efficiency as well as q l that is uh, q heat loss so we know the formula efficiency is equal to output by input here we can have w net output that by uh, heat supply input that is 50 by 150 obviously you know 50 by 150 by 1 by 3 that is 0 0.33 that in the form of percentage we can have a 33.3 percentage of thermal efficiency so in this system we can we can expect the thermal efficiency up to 33.3 percentage and then the remaining person is uh, the remaining portion is uh, wasted in the form of heat rejection so that can be calculated with the use of the second formula that is q net is equal to qh minus ql here we want to calculate ql alone so we can have the ql one side and we can bring the other terms out on the side so qh ql is equal to qh minus w net then so we can substitute so we know qh value then we know w net value so if you substitute we can have the uh, heat rejection class that is rejected heat rejected of the system is 100 megawatts right so this is the applications of uh, second law of thermodynamics so we can calculate the uh, thermal efficiency of the system also we can calculate the heat ejection by the system if it is uh, heat uh, pump sorry heat engine then just consider the second second uh, problem just uh, have a look at the problem a carnot engine a carnot heat engine this is 500 kilojoule of heat per cycle from a high temperature heat reservoir at uh, uh, 652 degrees Celsius and reject the heat to a low temperature heat reservoir. Right, this there is a heat uh, engine. So there will be a uh, heat source and there will be a heat sink. The heat uh, source temperature is to 652 degrees Celsius and the heat sink temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. Then also they gave uh, the work input. Heat transfer is 500 uh, kilojoule. 
so we can we have to calculate the thermal efficiency of the carnaud engine and also the second uh, the amount of heat rejected to the low temperature heat rise over here so this will look like same as the previous uh, uh, problem but here they stated as carnaud heat engine so you know if the uh, cycle is carnaud uh, heat engine there will be only temperature scales so we can use the formula of the thermal efficiency as 1 minus tl by th so it's a general term of uh, thermal efficiency is 1 minus ql by qh so we can uh, replace for carnaud cycle as 1 minus tl by th so here we know what is tl that is low temperature and we know what is th that is high temperature then if you substitute in the uh, formula we can uh, we can uh, able to derive the uh, thermal efficiency of a reversible yes carnot cycle right so carnot in the reversible right so if you substitute we can get the uh, efficiency around 67.2 percentage so the remaining portion the remaining portion will be a heat loss so that can be calculated heat loss but if that is reversible process that is carnot process we can have a ql by qhs tl by tk so that can be heat transfer can be written in the form of temperature so we know what is tl we know what is tk so then we can obtain the ql so the tl by tk will give you this ql Yes, so you know QL uh, is equal to W into QH. If you multiply, we can get the heat loss. So they gave 500 kilojoule Q, that is a heat uh, receives heat, uh, heat QH. So QH is given here. So you know the values of uh, so we want to calculate the ql value alone so we we, uh, we can have the ql and we know the tl value and we know th value also they gave qh value so if you substitute in this equation we can we can calculate the unknown value ql as 164 kilojoule so this is the application of the carnard heat engine problems just uh, the we got we got to uh, have to remember the these two formulas alone just remember thermal efficiency of carnot engine as 1 minus tl by th then thermal efficiency of uh, uh, heat engine will be 1 minus ql by qh then for carnot heat engine there will be ql is equal to tl and qh is equal to th then that's it then uh, we can move to the uh, next problem. Just uh, have a look of the problem. Then try to solve the problem. I think you can easily solve this problem. Here we have to calculate for refrigerator. So we can try to solve and inventor claims to have a developed a refrigerator that maintains the refrigerator space at 2 degrees celsius while operating in a room where the temperature is 25 degrees celsius so we know tl 2 degrees celsius we know th 25 degrees celsius and the cop of the refrigerator is 13.5 that is 13.5 so they gave the COP. Is there any truth uh, to his claim? So the, he is stating there is a 13.5 COP uh, by the refrigerator, but we have to check. Right. So the, we know the values of TL and we know the values of TH. 
So from that we can calculate the coefficient of performance. Yes, we can substitute the values. We know the formula. That is COP of the budget is equal to TL by TH minus TL. Right. So, so we can have so TL as a, in the form of Kelvin. So if we substitute the values, so TL will be uh, 275 Kelvin and only 5 minus 2. Again, 273 will be the same. So, if you calculate the COP of refrigerator, there will be 11.96 alone. So, this claim is also false. Right. Just we can calculate. So, we know TL and we know TH. Just we can calculate the COP of refrigerator. Then we can check. So, this is impossible to get a refrigerator with a performance of 13.5 percentage. The actual COP of refrigerator is 11.96, approximately 12 percentage. Right, so these are some uh, supplementary problems. Uh, this is uh, up to you to solve. I think, uh, I think we can have another uh, assignment. So just try to solve these kind of pro assignments, problems. So this is for your practice. So if you have any doubts, you can, uh, I'm ready to clarify at any time. Then just uh, the, the, these problems will be simple for you if you have the formulas of uh, thermal efficiency and COP. Then we can move to the uh, concept entropy. I think uh, from the previous uh, uh, portions, we, we have a we have, uh, uh, small idea about uh, what is entropy. But we can uh, have much more clarity about the, what is entropy. The second law state that the process occurs in a certain direction, not in any direction. Right? So this second law of thermodynamics stating the process direction. Right? So definitely there will be a direction. So the process won't occur in any direction. This statement of the second law of thermodynamics. So it often leads to the definitions of a new property called entropy. So because of this, we can introduce the term entropy, which is a quantitative measure of a disorder of the system. So entropy is the disorderness of the system. Then this entropy can also be explained as the measure of the unavailability of the heat to perform work in a cycle. So entropy can be called as an unavailability of a heat. Right. The, you know what is the coefficient of performance where this uh, in thermal efficiency and in thermal uh, coefficient of performance there is some uh, heat rejection. Right. So there is some uh, unused heat. Right. So that can be accounted as an entropy. So the unavailability of heat to perform work in a cycle can be accounted as entropy. This relates to the second law. Of, second law, since the second law predicts that not all heat provided to a cycle can be transformed into an equal amount of work some heat rejection must take place. So you know what is the second law of thermodynamics? There is some heat rejection. So that heat rejection can be accounted as an entropy. Right. So, so entropy is the disorder of, disorder of the system. Then uh, entropy also a measure of the unavailability of the heat so also uh, heat rejection of the system. So we can have another uh, clarifications but about the entropy. So if you want to calculate the entropy change, the entropy change during the reversible process is defined as follows. That is ds, that is change in uh, entropy is equal to uh, dq net by t. 
that is irreversible reversible right so that is if you want to calculate the change in entropy you can have the change in uh, uh, heat transfer net net heat transfer divided by temperature so s2 minus s1 is equal to integration of uh, delta q net by t so just uh, have the equation then for a reversible adiabatic process that is uh, isentropic process isentropic process change in entropy is zero you know what is reversible adiabatic process that is called a isentropic process for isentropic process we have a delta s change in entropy is zero so there will be s2 is equal to s1 right so isentropic entropy is constant like isothermal isochoric and isobaric right so the reversible adiabatic process is called an isentropic process you know so you can have what is isentropic process reversible adiabatic process so you know what is adiabatic process and you know what is reversible process if these two process combined together we can get the isentropic process there isentropy s2 will be equal to s1 so just have the equations and the concept of isentropic process then entropy change and isentropic process can be uh, classified as the entropy change and isentropic relations for the process can be summarized as follows so if that is for a pure substance uh, the change in temperature, so change in isentropy, entropy will be S2 minus S1 in the unit uh, kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Then uh, for isentropic process, there is S2 is equal to S1, you know. So if it is in incompressible substances like uh, liquids and solids, we can have the equation for any process that is a change in uh, temperatures as S2 minus S1 is equal to C. Uh, constant volume process, uh, specific heat capacity at constant volume into T2 by T1. Right, so then you know for isentropic process T2 will be equal to T1 because isentropic process IS2 is equal to S1. Just, just to have the formulas alone. Then, if it is ideal gas, uh, the uh, the constant specific heat for all the process can be S2 minus S1 is equal to uh, specific heat capacity at constant volume into ln D2 by T1 plus R into ln V2 by V1. That can be written as S2 minus S1 is equal to C. So, in the form of uh, constant. Uh, Specific heat capacity at constant volume process, we can have this equation that is T2 by T1, T2 by V1. So, in the form of constant pressure process, so, uh, specific heat capacity at uh, constant pressure process, we can have the entropy change as Cp uh, ln T2 by T1 minus R ln uh, P2 by V1. This uh, formula will be same, but if it is a constant volume, there will be a P2 by V1. If it is constant pressure process, we can have a P2 by P1. Then, if it is for isentropic process, you know, isentropic, there will be uh, T2 by T1 equal to V2 by V1. Here, S is equal to constant, that is, entropy is equal to constant. Um, also, we can have, have the formula as T2 by T1 is equal to. P2 by P1 power K minus 1 by K1. K. So, also you studied in the form of gamma, right? So, there, there will be gamma and K also. So, gamma minus 1 or N minus 1 if the process is polytropic process. The thing is, we can have the uh, formula for isentropic process. So, I think uh, you, we have studied these formulas in the previous chapter. So, for isentropic process, according to the ideal gas equation, PV power gamma is equal to constant, we can derive these equations. So, in isentropic process, we can have N is equal to gamma or K. So, K 
you know what is k comma or k equal to cp by cd so we can have this this kind of these three equations for isentropic process that you know already so directly we can move to the problem that is just have a look of the problem just uh, just read the problem steam at uh, 1 mega pascal if if the medium is steam we have to go to the there will be more use of your steam table right you, you have to look at the steam table right so here steam is a working medium so steam at 1 mega pascal pressure given 600 degrees celsius temperature given expand in a turbine to 0 0.1 mega pascal so p2 here is 0 0.01 mega pascal so p1 given p2 also given t1 also given if the pressure if the process is isentropic like you know s is equal to s find the final temperature you have to calculate t2 find the enthalpy that is uh, you know h of the steam so we have to calculate the h and the turbine work we have to calculate w right we have the values p1 t1 p2 so we can try to solve the problems we have to calculate t2 and h2 final enthalpy h2 and the w so we can here we can calculate so mass balance through the system will be equal so we can have m1 dot that is net mass balance equal to m2 dot is equal to m dot so energy balance here is e in is equal to energy input is equal to energy output so we can have this these are the steady steady flow energy equations so from the steady flow energy equation we can have this equation as just wait a minute now right so from the steady flow energy equation we can have the equation as uh, m m dot h is equal to so in is equal to out so here m dot h1 is equal to m2 dot h2 plus w out sorry hello Hello. 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 Right, uh, we can continue so where we stopped. So we have to calculate the W. So W can be calculated with the use of uh, the formula W out is equal to M into H2, sorry, H1 minus H2 that we know the formula. So uh, before that, we have to calculate H1 and H2. So we know the values P1, T1. So from that P1, T1, again, we have, we can, we can, Calculate the H1 S1 values by, with the use of property tables. So we have to look at the steam table that can be accessed from your end. So we can go to the property tables and charts. So in that, you have to compare the uh, pressure and temperature. So here they gave the pressure as 1 megapascal. One temperature is 600 degrees Celsius. Just go to the pressure table because of because they stated steam. So we have to look at the uh, saturated water. Yes, pressure table that is uh, A5. So at A5, one mega pascal. So we have to go. Yes. 
So this is my own mega pascal. So we can take the properties. Yes, we can take the properties of one mega pascal, but the saturation temperature here is 99.61, right? So first, first, second column, right? Yes, you can have. So first is uh, pressure at uh, one megapascal. Then uh, saturation temperature here is um, under approximately 100 degrees Celsius, but the stated the temperature is 600 degrees Celsius. So we have to compare desaturation with the T1. So T1 is greater than desaturation. So if that occurs, so the uh, steam is superheated. Right. So temperature is more, right? So you know the curves, so the saturation line. This, this temperature is beyond the saturation vapor line. So we can have the uh, steamers and superheated. So we have to look at the superheated table. So we can directly go to the table. Yes, saturated water. This is saturated water. The superheated water, right? A6. Then the corresponding 0.1 megapascal, right? It's one megapascal. Corresponding one megapascal superheated table will be used to identify the properties, right? So here, yeah, one megapascal. So the saturation temperature is uh, 179 degrees Celsius. Right. Sorry, you have to look at a thousand is one ninety so in saturation pressure table you have to look thousand kilopascal that is one megapascal. The saturation temperature will be one seventy nine. So our uh, T temperature one is uh, greater than this saturation temperature. So we have to take the uh, saturation superheated table. So go to the superheated table that is A6 corresponding one megapascal pressure. Where is that? Yes, here one megapascal pressure and uh, 600 degree uh, Celsius properties can be taken as the properties of state one. So we can have the initial uh, specific volume V as 0.4 and we can have a U1, we can have H1, we can have S2. So this S2 and H2 is important here. So S1, is, S1 and H1 is important here. So S1 here is 8 point something and H1 here is 3698. So we can compare. So yes, 3698, 8.3031, right? So they have taken the values from the table. Then we can move to the second state. You know, since the process is isentropic, S2 will be equal to S1, right? So we can take this S1 value as S2. So we can have S2 also as 8.03 something. So with the use of this S2, we can calculate the other properties. Then we, we know P2 is equal to, they, they gave the pressure at T2, right? They gave the P2 value as 0 0.01 megapascal. And we know the S2 value that is equal to S1. So from this, we can compare the other properties. So the corresponding saturation mixture from Chetish mixture table, we have to look at this type of process. So corresponding 0 0.01 megapascal. Now we have to look at the 100 kilopascal, 0 0.01 in the sense, 100 kilopascal at the saturation pressure table, A5. Yes. So we can have these values. We can have these values, then we can compare. We know, we know, yes. S2 value, right? So we know S2 value. So we can have a SF value and we can have a G value. Also, we can, if you want, you can take a ZG value. So we know S is equal to, that is Y is equal to YF plus X into 
y g minus uh, y f or y f g so in the form of uh, entropy that is s is equal to s f sorry s f plus x into s f g so from that we can calculate the value of the x right from that we can calculate the value of the x so here they calculated just to use the values so just cross check the value of x2 so if you calculate from the s to s is equal to sf plus f x into sfg so you know the value of sf and you know the value of sfg taken from the table and if you substitute we can we can calculate this x2 then this x2 is used to calculate the h2 so h2 also can be taken from the same so we know what is hf and we know what is hfc then we know the equation h is equal to hf plus x into hfg so we have the hf value we have the hfg value and we calculate the x value from here and if you substitute we can calculate the h2 value right so the h2 value will be 2545.6 kilojoule per kg right that we want to calculate right so we calculated here right initial final enthalpy right so h2 calculated then uh, we can compare these two so at uh, h2 value t2 will be equal to three saturation in p2 so uh, because this is a uh, saturation mixture right so we can take the temperature as a saturation temperature so the corresponding here yeah. this corresponding temperature at 0 0.01 megapascal pressure can be taken as t2 right so t2 will be 100 degrees celsius approximately 100 degrees celsius then we can sorry T saturation at P2. P2 here is 0.1. Just wait a minute. Uh, is T2 given? The saturation and pressure 2 can be taken as your T2. So here, uh, sorry. Zero point zero one megapascal. So we have to look at the uh, zero point zero one megapascal table. So it's zero point zero one. Yes. So if you look at the 0 0.01 megapascal pressure, there will be a 40 is uh, 5.81 45.81 degree Celsius here 10 degree 10 kilopascal right. Sorry, just make a correction. So we have to look at at 10 degree. 10 kilopascal that is equal to 0 0.01 megapascal right the unit conversion is important just yes. from uh, pressure table we have to uh, take the corresponding uh, 10 kilopascal values to calculate the value of x and this x value is used to calculate the h2 value then the corresponding the saturation temperature is taken as a your, uh, temperature as state 2. Then, so, so 0 0.01 megapascal is equal to 10 kilopascal, and 1 megapascal is equal to that is 1000 kilopascal. Right, just uh, have a, just remember that so 1 megapascal is equal to 1000 kilopascal, and 0 0.01 megapascal is equal to 10 kilopascal. 
right so we can take the corresponding values and we can we can solve these problems then we have to finally solve this work of the turbine so work of the turbine can be calculated as from the above diagram so we can have we can work is equal to this if you want to cancel this m dot we can bring this m dot in the left hand side so we can have w dot by m dot will give you the capital w right so w work output is equal to h h1 minus h2 so we we we, we know h1 value and we calculated a h2 value so if you if you different different if you take a difference between these two you can have the w output so this is the applications of uh, the formulas so this is the applications of the yes so by this way we can calculate the enthalpy and the uh, temperatures whatever whatever the property we want so like like that we can have the another example so that can be uh, discussed in the next class so we have isentropic efficiency for turbine isentropic efficiency for compressor and we can we can we can calculate this is the important so the efficiency of the isentropic so there will be two three problems i think we can complete right so just 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 10 minutes we will we can complete it here so there is no important to listen these slides so we can skip isentropic efficiency for turbine just take this formula alone just can be you know what is turbine so we have to give the uh, uh, working medium with the pressure at t1 and t1 so we can rotate with the use of uh, some wheels right so turbine will be there will be some uh, wheels to rotate this shaft so if you pass this uh, steam to the wheels this, there will be some rotation so then after that there will be p2 so here there will be p1 t1 and after the process we have p2 and t2 right so th there is actually is irreversible but uh, ideal can be reversible so if if there is a rotation there will be a uh, reversible process. So just consider this irrevers irreversible and reversible process of an uh, uh, turbine. So that can be the efficiency of the turbine can be calculated as actual turbine work divided by isentropic turbine work. So you know isentropic in the sense reversible process. So actual turbine work will be WA and uh, uh, isentropic W turbine work will be WS. So you know WA will be H1 minus H2A. That is uh, actual. Then uh, WS can be calculated as H1 minus H2S. That is 2S stands isentropic. Right. So, so this is a HS diagram. Just, just uh, look at the diagram. We, get, we have a P1 line. We have a P2 line. So this line, so isentropic process one to two. So one to two yes will give you actual turbine work. Sorry, uh, isentropic turbine work. And one to two a will give you actual turbine work. So we can calculate just to have the formulas alone. So if you want to calculate the efficiency of the turbine, we can have WA by WS. That is H1 minus H2A. So, Yes. Yes. Do you have any qualifications? Do you have any doubt? Just wait, wait for five minutes, we can complete. Let me stop. Yes. Just have this formula alone. Then 
uh, if you want to calculate the isentropic efficiency for compressor so this is the compressor so we we know if you are done given so we can get the compression so that can be calculated so if it as c is equal to isentropic compressor work divided by actual compressor work that is the reverse right so this is the turbine you know turbine and uh, compressor are the uh, reverse uh, opposites so ws by w a can be the eta c so that can be h2 s minus h1 divided by h2 a by h1 so just uh, have the formulas alone then this process the error head will be that different so just just have the uh, formulas and uh, the figure alone then that can be used to calculate this that can, that can be used to solve this this kinds of problem right so just uh, have a look at the problem a steam at 1 megapascal 60 degrees celsius expands in a turbine to 0.01 megapascal the isentropic work of the turbine is given if the isentropic efficiency of the turbine is 90% efficiency is given calculate the actual work find the actual turbine exit temperature or quality of the steam so the, we want to calculate the uh, that is x right so we have to calculate the h x so they gave we know the formula for a turbine right so turbine is equal to w a by w s we h1 minus h2 a by h1 minus h2 s so they gave the w a i think so, so w a can be so we want to calculate the that find the actual turbine exit temperature so we, because of that we have to calculate w a that is uh, uh, efficiency temperature the so turbine eta t divided by the into ws so they gave the effic uh, efficiency of the turbine and they gave the uh, ws as uh, 1152.2 so that can be calculated that can be substituted to get calculate uh, wa so we have ws and uh, eta and we can calculate wa then this wa can be used somewhere so before that we have we can calculate we have uh, p1 and d1 so as usual we can calculate the s1 value so p1 from the property tables we can get uh, the corresponding values of uh, p1 and t1 then we have to compare i think uh, again the same like the previous problem so 1 mega pascal and 600 degrees celsius so they will be superheated so we can take the corresponding values of h1 uh, and s1 in the superheated table so there will be tables so you know isentropic process is h s1 is equal to s2 so we can take uh, s1 is equal to s2 then um, they give again the p2 so the corresponding value of the same 0.01 mega pascal is taken to compare to calculate the x value and from that x value we can calculate the h2 value again we can calculate wa with the help of h2 h1 minus h2 a that can be calculated here and if that is if there is a yeah so actual so there will be calculated yes again we can repeat this is for isentropic process this is actual process right so if for actual process so this is actual process h2a so from that h2a and p2 we can calculate the t2a right just uh, have just to try the property tables and charts the, this table will arrive right so from that uh, This is the thing is the procedure will be same but we have to uh, we have to look at the from different uh, view so this this problem also will be same so here also uh, they use the uh, formula the air enters a compressor and it's compressed adiabatically right isentropic process 
from 0.1 megapascal and they gave p1 and t1 and they gave uh, p2 we want to count the work done on the app for a compressor isotropic efficiency they gave efficiency compression right so here they stated compression in the previous problem they gave turbine right so thing is the same problem right so the, the, you know the turbine is opposite to compression so we have to use the efficiency compressor as ws by wa right so the remaining things will be same then we can call it the uh, properties whatever we want right so so after this the first unit of your syllabus is computer then we will look at the glasses in inequality in the uh, the remaining part missed in this first unit is glasses inequality so that can be uh, discussed in the uh, next unit so we can uh, we can have the second unit in the uh, next class yes if you have any queries just because of uh, lack of time we are uh, fasting so yes, so if you have any queries just you can ask now or else you can uh, hang up thank you have a good day thank you sir Thank you.